The High Dominion's new Urian vassals have had a rebellious faction wreaking havoc for the last few years, and that's an effort that's about to be completely and utterly crushed. And in four years' time, war with the Numerians to the Galactic East may once again be upon us, believe it or not. Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Galactic Paragons in our High Dominion 2 series. So, things are going pretty well. We have two fleets about to converge on this one fleet that somehow arrived in the Grokken system. Bits and pieces of metal are strewn across MK or M4 K14 surface, encircling what looks like the hulk of a ship. The wreckage appears to be deserted, but energy readings remain. Uh, go ahead and research it. Attacking enemy vessels. All right, so we've arrived. That fleet is not going to last long. Complete. Rest in peace. Do we have a science ship somewhat nearby that can research all that stuff? By the way, I don't think we do. Let's go ahead and build a, some mining stations there. We have some more that we can do down here, too, that I need to make sure I stay on top of. I've honestly... There are a ton of things peacefully in my territory that I need to do. That I just haven't had the opportunity to do because of all the stuff going on. Okay, so we still have an amenities problem here, believe it or not. Right now... Right now, Wafer 2 is a factory world. It was a tech world for a while. So I'll tell you what, if it's not going to be a tech world anymore, we need to replace this with something that's actually going to help with security. So... Let's go ahead and place a slave processing facility on Wafer 2. Makes sense. Wafer 2 is the original capital world of the Urians, which we took during the war. And now we need to move on these systems here. So we're going to take Dokken, Oxamon, Zavaris, and then Fatis, and then you. I want you to take Grokken and then Saldar. We have armies in the area that are already following along Attacking with our vessels. fleet because they're in aggressive stance, so they're doing their thing. Which is pretty freaking great. Thank you again to the commenter who pointed out assets. that aspect of things. I wasn't aware of the the stance benefits of armies. I don't know if that was a recent addition or if it's just something I'd managed to overlook in all my years playing Stellaris, but it's a very useful thing to know. All right, gas extraction wells. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Let's. Well, hang on. We do have an amenities issue here. And we have two things we can build. So why don't we go ahead and build hollow theaters on Enter's Mandate, followed by gas extraction wells. How about that? Economically, things seem to be improving. Food is not great. All right, I want you to attack that fleet, and then I want you to attack Fatis... And we just want to see if we can wipe these guys out once and for all, if at all possible. Construction complete. We do have some space amoebas nearby. We also need to fight. Attacking enemy assets. All right, it seems to be going well, to say the very least. Attacking enemy vessels. Stranded scientist. The wreckage on the asteroid M4K14 is the remains of a vessel belonging to a now stranded scientist, Tiran, identifying herself as belonging to the hitherto unknown Nagyari species. From amidst the wreckage, she somehow managed to contact Tabu, daughter of Brock, our science officer, stationed aboard the ATS Cateranus, and is requesting to be rescued. She explains that her collision was due to malfunctioning navigational sensors, and that she's been unable to leave the asteroid for several years. She claims her scientific knowledge to be without equal, and that she would be a valuable asset. She points to her survival as proof of that. So will this be a... What's interesting here is that will this be another, like, legendary leader of some kind? Or will it just be... because? All of these events have the potential to have changed. So I'm kind of tempted to say yes, just to give it the opportunity. Yeah, let's say she may join our cause. Yeah, so here's Tiran. Wow. Wow. Holy crap. So, I mean, I don't know if she's like going to be right now we have we could replace uh, the grand storyteller with Tiran. 
and we're going to get several bonuses from that. Especially for computing technology. So yeah, let's go ahead and replace... I just think it makes the most sense to do that. There's a number of bonuses that we're getting as well that are going to be useful. So we're going to put her on the council as the grand storyteller. It's really interesting. We have a xenophobic empire, yet our entire council is like Xenos, with the exception of the leader, which is hilarious. I think it's just a side effect of playing Galactic Paragons, as we talked about in the last episode. Star system charted. Sphere of influence a little bit of expanded. cognitive dissonance, if you will. All right, shared knowledge. The recent scientist edition, Tiran, has put her knowledge of technology to good use. Her I shared insights have pushed our physics research to new heights. Technology secured. So we have synchronized defenses now. And subspace sensors and black hole observatory. Nice. So she just gave us some technologies. That worked out. All right, Pulserano mandates. All right, it might have some things we can do here, but we're going to need to buy some more minerals to make it happen. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we need civilian industries yesterday. And we'll just do gene clinics for the other slot since it's a brand new colony. And it looks like we're about to wrap up here. We just have to maybe take a few more planets, I would guess. Would be... Yeah. We just have some planets to take, and it won't be particularly challenging. So let's head over that direction. Space Really. We've made first contact with mysterious aliens in the Orville system. For now, we have codenamed them the Gimel Menace until we can find out more about them. If they possess a language, we should decipher it so that we can assess how much of a threat they pose. Interesting. All right. Feti, daughter of Etha, figure out what's going on with the Gimels. <laughs> this series knows how to keep me on my toes so far. Despite the fact, remember, by the way, this is exactly what I was talking about. I, I had a reduced number of galactic neighbors in episode one. Remember this? I said, we're going to reduce this down, and you might think that that would lead to fewer encounters. Hasn't felt that way, has it? We feel very much surrounded by enemy spacefarers, which is common. For whatever reason, again, even when you set that number to zero, for whatever reason... Enemy empires just tend to pop up in the early game and still represent a threat fairly early on, even if there's no other empires that you've slated to appear. And in this case, we still allowed for some to appear, which is just funny. All right, so let's go ahead and build the starbase in Uchromia. And you can build the mining station there. Looks like those are being built. All right, why don't you go ahead and build the chort base after the mining station. All right, so this should be it. Secured. We're moving in. All right, exotic materials labs and habitability complete. have just improved. So let's now research rare crystal mining. That seems like the obvious choice. We, honestly, there. Ooh, mega engineering. See, that one is going to be there regardless. New research. I'm going to select autonomous station protocols just because this is the fastest. It. it Maybe not the best logic, but it's the cheapest technology of the ones currently available of a of a couple of different options that all help with tech progress. So I'm just going to focus on that. All right, so let's send you to Saldar as well, because it seems like, you know, we do need to clear out this area of Hunter Space Amoebas. So let's go ahead and do that. use that fleet to take care of that while the second fleet with its army in tow captures the final world belonging to these rebels and ends this fight once and for all construction complete there we go what's this oh okay so these are space amoebas make it so I had a feeling but I just wasn't sure all right, so who's idle? 
Oh yeah, we have an admiral that's idle. We need to make another fleet, basically, is what the game is telling me. <laughs> another fleet is, is, is past due. Leader retired. Admiral Satu, daughter of Nock, just kidding, has gone AWOL. Do you see that? AWOL. What? All right. Well, Stir, daughter of Gak, you just, got, you just got a fleet. Welcome. Welcome to your command. I was literally just talking about you. All right. So where did, where did my armies go? Your idol? You're supposed to be following the first... What, what are you doing? Like, you're supposed to be over here. <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay. Uh, there's no planets here to take, and I don't think there's planets in Fatis either. Let's just double check. Yeah, so we just have to take here. So I, was, I thought they were already together, but they got separated at some point, somehow. Maybe they were following a different fleet, and I got them mixed up. Or maybe the fleet they were following went to another system, and they no longer counted as nearby. All right, let's repair those hollow theaters. It's finally time to do that. And then we need additional amenities here. And it looks like we might need more slots. So let's get that unlocked. Council agenda ready. What have we here? Oh, nice. Civil exclusion. So we won't have any more increase in crime, but look at our resource output that's about to be improved for 10 years. Holy crap. All right. Now... Yeah, let's go ahead and unlock another Counselor slot. It's our first series in the new update. Let, let's just lean fully into that, you know? Why not? All right, we're very close to being able to achieve our war goals. They really don't have anything left to fight with. I'm going to give the order to reinforce that fleet. Now, wait a minute. What are you doing? You should be attacking those guys. Attack those guys. Then attack those guys. <laughs> I don't know why we're having to discuss this so much. Then attack those guys, and those guys, and those guys. With any luck, I won't have to reissue these orders, but I probably will because of the way that sensors work in this game. If anything, like, blocks the sensors of this fleet from being able to detect them, even for a moment, it, it'll just... just it'll, everything will fall apart. <laughs> so, all right. Is there nothing more I can do here? Chemical plants. You know what? I don't need chemical plants right now on this planet. That's not as necessary as something to help keep. Yeah. Less, I mean, it might just be that we need an additional... I could... I could do an ancient refinery instead. Would a chemical plant... How many slots do you have? Just one? Yeah. Let's replace it with an ancient refinery. We'll get more... We're splitting our minerals into three different rare resources instead of one, but I think that's a good improvement. All right, so the army's on the way. Should have already been on the way. Attacking enemy vessels. All right, good. Now the fleet is actually doing what it's supposed to do. Taking control of this territory. Toxic terraforming candidate discovered. All right. Astenda 3B. Fascinating. Oh, good. Looks like we were able to get a science ship out there to explore. Oh, also, let's go ahead and build some mining stations. And it seems as though we have an archaeological site to explore. Wegri, you need... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we need some, uh, I would say, commercial zones. No, gene clinics actually would be a good idea there. And then the Kelnick colony. Oh, yeah, we, we need to reestablish the tier sector. So this is the... Tier sector, and I don't know that I could really... I don't know. Tib, son of Mig. If I made him a uh, governor of this sector, we'd get additional minerals from jobs if he was a counselor, but he's not going to be a counselor right away. But we would get more trade value. From Ukna, we would get more minerals and trade value right away. Yeah, let's go ahead and put Ukna in charge of that sector. It's a shame that Kandrith died, because I did want to make him governor of 
the core sector if it was possible to do so. We don't have a governor for the core sector right now, unfortunately. All right, so we've met the Tianqi. Thought the power is hating us. That was kind of expected. And this time, I look forward to not having to deal with their nonsense on the galactic stage. All right, so this fleet is about to arrive. Uh, do you not have the ability to attack any of these ships that are just sitting here? Because you should. Attacking enemy vessels. There we go. That's what should have happened the first time. Let's get rid of all those. Now we can actually send you for upgrades in the Wayford system. And it looks like the... Yep. Are you not set to Attacking aggressively? Enemy there we go. They are. So the first fleet is just moving through, clearing out some of the aliens in the area. And this should end the war right here. Ground invasion force has seized a planet. Right, let's pause for a moment. That general has just leveled up as a result of that fight, so we can have more food or more minerals per month. Let's say more food. Homestead or two. Not bad. All right, so we can now achieve war goals, which is assert overlordship. All right, so now what's interesting is it looks like it actually gave us that territory directly. We now control that. So, potentially... I just realized something. We may be able... I think we can do this. If we gave them Saldar, Dokken, and Fatis back, we may be able to make them more loyal faster, which will help us economically. But right now, I don't have the... Oh, no, that's that's not... Here we go. Saldar, Fatis, and Dokken. Now, what's hilarious is that, like, that they're not... They don't really seem that grateful about that. <laughs> you should be happier about that. I'm just saying. They're not willing to pledge their loyalty. They're just not willing to. Hmm. They're not even willing to give me one point of loyalty. That's freaking funny. All right, well, we could give them the systems as an act of goodwill since we quelled the rebellion, but the subversive goal would be hopefully that will help them become more loyal sooner. So let's go ahead and send that offer. And we will take our armies out of their territory. We can't control all these stations anyway. We need to give them back. Alright, there we go. So they took that. Traditions are available. Let's go ahead and get additional housing from all of our districts. That's handy. Now, the question is... See, now their loyalty is improving. That worked changing by 12 every year. So I can send an envoy to improve relations. Let's also do that. And we don't currently have espionage set up on them, but we're going to do that just so that we have more intelligence on our own vassal. Shouldn't be necessary, but just to maintain total control of the situation and remain strong, that's what we're going to do. Now we're taking these fleets here, and we're going to clear out the Sapphire Lurkers. Let's go ahead and build mining stations and research stations here. Construction complete. And now we have peace for a moment, if you can believe it. It's actually happening. Now, we still don't have a surplus in terms of our consumer goods, but everything else is starting to improve. All right, Alpine World, let's go ahead and colonize you. I need to buy some consumer goods to make it happen, but I can do that, thankfully. This will be the, we'll call it the Urana colony, that's fine. And then any other worlds, there was one more, wasn't there, somewhere? Or am I thinking of this one down here? I might be thinking of that one, but it's not actually in my territory. 
Okay, so there are worlds that I can terraform. We need climate restoration to restore the tomb worlds and recolonize them. However, we have a savanna world down here which we can terraform if I just had the energy for it, which I can arrange to have the energy for it. Like that. So let's terraform that into an alpine world. And now Technology secured. begins the moment of truth. Um, it looks like I do have my new civic point, which is nice. All right, we can do a food upgrade as well. That's coming at a good time. Uh, we can do a faculty of Archaeo Studies, which, I mean, how much are we generating here from our... Do we have observation stations here still? I don't. So, like, there's all these... I don't think we have the the ability to build them because of the uh, kind of agreement that we made where they gave us a Gaia planet. So now it's like, can we move in and just take them? Because I'm kind of tempted to, you know? Like, I want to know what would happen if I moved in and took them. I just... I mean, it is one system, so you would think they wouldn't be able to defend with a huge army, but I just don't want to do it too soon. Because it would be hilarious if that's the way, like, everything just turned against me. And by hilarious, I mean tragic. <laughs> it would be bad. It would be very, very bad. Almost there. There we go. I want to go ahead and have that capital fully upgraded up. Let's upgrade it out, rather. So we currently have the Heroic Past and Diplomatic Core civics. But we can add a new civic. And we need to pick one that fits the High Dominion of Sindar. Warrior culture certainly does. It would allow for a new council position called the Arbiter of Duels. Duelists turn alloys into unity, amenities, and naval capacity. Vaults of Knowledge. This is a really cool one that's also related to... And this would be timely given the death of Kandrith. This would be on the minds of people. This this basically allows us to retain some of the bonuses. I'm already really leaning towards this one because I, I know from hearing about it what it does. The knowledge, principles, and experiences of exceptional people are digitized and accumulated in the vaults of knowledge. Citizens can access, can access this source of wisdom and experience to learn from the ghosts of the past. So they increase leader experience gain based on destiny traits acquired. So it just makes all of your leaders level up that much faster for the rest of the game. Slaver guilds would also be useful, would improve slave happiness would improve slave pop resource output. But I think that would also mean that some of our population was enslaved. Notice the enslaved pop ratio there. I think that kind of enforces that. Shadow Council. Tempting. That would give us more code breaking. Elections would be cheaper. It'd be easier to elect rulers as a result. Ruler pops would uh, put out more resources. <laughs> Reanimators. We could be zombies. Or we could start the zombie apocalypse on the galactic scale if we wanted to. We could do Pompous Purists, which is one that I played with when I was thinking about potentially doing this series. But the thing is, notice that the effect is you can only engage in diplomacy with other empires if they are the proposer. So the only diplomacy you ever have is diplomacy that you initiate. That's it. Nothing else. Which is crazy. You would have an increase in trust growth, which is nice, I guess, and you have more envoys, but I would have to remember to propose everything. And that's one of the reasons ultimately that I turned it down because I'm already doing a series where I'm playing and commentating at the same time. I'm doing YouTube, so I'm, I'm splitting my attention between different factors. I'm still relearning the game to a certain degree. And that would give me even more of a burden like of things to keep track of to make sure that I'm doing. Whereas, you know, if the AI occasionally comes in and proposes something useful, then I can just accept an offer that's made to me. All right, please state... More unity from enforcers and from telepaths. Pleasure seekers. Allows the decadent lifestyle living standard under which all affected pops have increased happiness and consumer goods upkeep. And it adds additional pop growth from entertainers. <laughs> Interesting. 
nationalistic zeal, a strong sense of nationalistic pride per permeates all layers of this society, so less war exhaustion gain and claims are cheaper. Mutagenic spas would improve pop growth speed but reduce happiness. Mining guilds is tempting. Masterful crafters, I think we went with in the previous series. Functional architecture. Eh. Remember, all of these unlock a council position. All of them. Distinguish admiralty. Ship starting experience plus 30 and admiral experience gain plus 3%. So admirals would level up a little bit faster. Not a lot, but a little. Not a lot. Citizen service. This would improve naval capacity. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just... I, I don't see anything there that's more enticing than Vaults of Knowledge. Oh, we don't have that much unity yet. All right, so we're going to have to wait until we have the unity we need to do that, which is about 3,660. Not going to take a long time, but we'll need to wait. That's unfortunate. Okay, so... As I was saying, right as all of that kicked off, we have some decisions to make down here. I also do need to make sure this place is, like, fully ready. I don't have a ton of alloy income right now, and I would like to change that, to be honest. So I'm probably going to do what I can to build more alloy foundries. I haven't done a whole lot of that in the series so far. All right, looks like... Yeah, we have some issues with these crystalline shards in the area. You know, it's interesting. I think I chose the peaceful option towards the Tianqi. Not really thinking about it. Are the Numerian Crusaders have insulted me? Uh, okay. So they're becoming hostile again. I wonder. They still have an equivalent sized fleet relative to mine. We're upgrading our ships right now in the Wayford Station. Star system charted. So that that's just an indicator that it's the Numerians we're going to have to fight against next. Period. That's just the way things are going. All right, I don't yet have the ability to build like a fighter base, but I think a defense grid supercomputer would come in handy here. No particular reason. And a communications jammer. And then we'll eventually upgrade the Star Fortress once those are built. I do still need more consumer goods, so let's go ahead and get those built. Wayfred 2 will need to upgrade its central colony building before long. I think we are now at a point where, yeah, in about six months, we will be able to be at war. And they will probably declare on us pretty quickly, that would be my guess. All right, so this scientist that was just looking at various things, let's go ahead and we have a couple things to do. We have an archaeology site there. Well, first of all, I want you to do that one there. No, 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 no. Come down here and then come back and do this one because I don't want that ship to get stuck. That would be bad. Let's build a starbase there. And you are automated. All right, so how is that going? All right, they're clearing out those lurkers. Technology secured. Crystal mines are now available. Very good. Ooh, orbital ring and Batharian power plants. I didn't know those were even available. But we have a world somewhere with Batharian stone on it. So let's go ahead and research that then. It's only going to take 19 months. Not a very long time. Uh, do we have exotic gases? Yes, we do. We can start upgrading our research stations. Ooh, okay. We can start getting more technological progress. We kind of need that yesterday. Technology secured. All right, research station output plus 10%. Thank you. I It's like the game heard me. Ooh, hyper relays. Shields. Which do I like more? The thing is, hyper relays are going to take a lot to construct, and I need to build ships and defenses first. So I kind of just want to have shields to defend myself. We're going to do that first. That's the goal. Technology secured. Food from farmers and food from starbase construction. Pause.
I do need... Hmm. Let's go ahead and go for ecological adaptation because that might be useful for some of the planets that I've taken over from the Yuri. And the F free mandates. Oh, very obvious opportunity here. We're going to do an alloy foundry, 100%. And that will be enough for now. Do I have a colony ship on the way there? Yes, I do. Did I just see debris somewhere? I think I did. Yeah, it's debris just due to all of these guys. There's also debris down here, which I hadn't noticed. So maybe I have a science ship that can take care of that. Right now you're automated. So yeah, why don't you come down here? And I want you to tell you what, I want you to come research that. These are just projects. And then what I'm going to do is research special projects. And I also want you to explore and survey systems. Don't worry about anomalies just yet. We'll do that manually, but I want you to start that order as soon as you're done with that. That'll work out well. Construction oh. complete. All right, so the Numerian Crusaders have closed their borders. I'm shocked. That also means we can declare war. So let's go ahead and close our borders to them. And I'm going to send this fleet. First of all, they need to upgrade. They're, they're at the Wayford Station already. So as soon as your upgrades are done, I want you to come to this station on the front line. Actually, I want you to go to Pakshalika. As soon as the upgrades are done. Upgraded. Good. Space boom life form encountered. It's going to take a few years for them to travel. Now, relic activation is possible. Oh, you know what else we can do? We have, I think we have enough to actually do this civic reform. So if we select Vault of Knowledge, we do. We've got just enough for it. So let's go ahead and reform that. And now we have an available council position. Which, oh, that's nice. It just unlocked for us. That's freaking cool. So we can make it any one of these three. Oh, I see. We can change. That's what it is. We can change it. But there are more council positions, too. So let's say Keeper of the Vaults. And then I might be able to put someone in this slot. I could put Tyran in that slot, potentially. I th yeah, I think she's the only sensible option, really. Let's go ahead and put her in that slot. She's the Keeper of the Vaults. And now Leader Upkeep will be... So this is per skill level, and she's level 6. So Leader Upkeep and Leader Cost just got a lot better for us. It's a huge improvement. Alright, now we're finally taking care of stuff down here. I just feel like we're going to have a war with the Numerians any second now. We also need to build cruisers. So I'll probably do that at the beginning of the next episode just to make sure that they're designed and ready. Do you happen to know any intelligent sapiens that could use an additional stream of energy credits? Show us your wares. Uh, I don't know. Not interested. Move along. Not interested. All right, Kelnick Colony is ready. Yeah, civilian industries. Obvious opportunity. Economically, things are starting to improve slowly but surely, but man, is it just, it's, it's making me fight for it. I'm going to do an industrial district there to continue to help with our consumer goods. Nice. So this is our executor. We can upgrade, ooh, defense engineer. This is a leader trait. So as a counselor, defense platforms would have more hull points and do more damage. Also, oh, I for talent. Leader experience gain plus 10%. Knock is only... Oh, he's already 69. Nice. So, you know what? Yeah, let's do Defense Engineer because I want to make sure that what happened before doesn't happen again. I don't want to get invaded a second time like that, you know? Attacking enemy vessels. All right, so how's this going over here? Pretty smoothly, I imagine. Yep, that's done. All right, now I just want you to go upgrade at Wayfred. Actually, no, I want you to upgrade at Sin. 
We're gonna head up there. We have a lot of expansion to do. A lot, a lot of expansion. Now the Enthrus Mandate. You could benefit from more consumer goods. So let's do that. Believe me, I want to upgrade my research complexes too. I'll probably start doing that. Hang on. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give the order to upgrade both of the research complexes on Sindar Prime so that we have good centralized research production. And I think we're about done complete. with the content for this episode. Let's see. All right. We're still... We still have a bit of a consumer good shortage on account of all the upgrades we're doing. Makes perfect sense. I would rather have more alloys than consumer goods, though. In progress. So as soon as we have the opportunity... All right, caravaneers be gone. Order them to avoid Kelnick Colony. Go away. So much the better. All right, we're looking into all of those archaeological sites. Let me go ahead and buy some consumer goods, just so that I don't have to worry as much about the impending shortage. I don't want those effects to kick in a second time. All right, looks like the first fleet is finally... They just they just got an order to fully repair themselves. Like, fully store themselves up, which they actually haven't been the entire time they've existed on account of all the fighting we've been doing. It's been crazy. Okay, is there anything I can build that would actually help with my immediate problem, which is consumer goods related? No, there isn't. Could I benefit from having more Durasteel armor? Yes, I could. I could also benefit from having strike craft, so let's go ahead and research that, because I feel like we're a little bit behind in that regard. All right, so they're heading to the Sin system. Let's go, yeah, now the upgrades are actually gonna work. So I'm gonna send them to Pakshalika when the upgrades are done. Let's have you upgrade. It does seem like things are getting a little calmer. Ferris Mandate is ready for a new building as well. So hold on. Let's look into this. If we buy some minerals, I could do an Audit to the Monument, or we could do Alloy Foundries, which I've been saying I need more alloys, so let's do that. Pretty much anywhere that I can build alloy foundries, I'm going to build them. Either that or industrial districts. But on planets that actually have building slots, alloy foundries. That way we're not... I mean, yes, I need consumer goods too, so industrial districts are producing both, and I need to bear that in mind. All right, see? Consumer goods shortage just went away. So to complete the sentence that was literally just coming out of my mouth, what I'm doing is working. Thankfully. Things are starting to balance out a little bit was looking hairy there for a few episodes, and it could still get hairy, but if we're in a better position to defend against whatever this guy throws at me next, or if we take the first move and catch him off guard, we could really do well. All right, so the governor of... They're governing Kelnick Colony, which is actually the tier system, as I recall. Let's take a look here. Yeah. So this is the governor of tier. So we can add trade value or add more monthly minerals. Let's just go with what resource we need more of. We're going to go with more monthly minerals for now. We're also 39 minutes into the episode. I'm having a blast, so it's hard to it's hard to stop. But I'm going to go ahead and stop this one here. Let's get some systems incorporated into our territory as well, since we have that opportunity. Also, um, it looks like we're taking care of some debris down here, but why don't you first... Survey that system, research that project, research that project. So now in order, they're going to go there, there, survey, and then go do the thing, and then set up to auto-explore all the rest of that debris. That debris, honestly, might be going away before long, because I kind of let it sit there for a while. I don't have many science ships. My leaders have been placed elsewhere. That is one interesting aspect of the use of new leaders, you know, to help with the council system. I talked about this, I think, a little bit earlier in the series. It's a little bit harder for me to have another science ship 
Whereas in this situation, I typically would. And it's because we've gotten these great leaders that we want for other reasons. They're taking up a leader slot that would normally be given to a science ship. So I could exceed the capacity if I wanted to, but I'd prefer to stay within the bounds of you know the game's limitations so that I don't get so I don't have additional penalties making my life more difficult when the game has already been making my life difficult in various ways. So in the next episode, we could very well end up at war again with the uh, Numerian Crusaders. It looks like maybe there might be something going on over here. I'm not sure quite what's what's happening. They don't show that they're at war with anyone. Oh, apparently we're not spying on them. What? I'm so confused. I don't know how we aren't spying on them. I never took the spy away. I never reassigned a spy, but the spy is gone. <laughs> we were spying on them earlier, and then we weren't. Maybe I accidentally reassigned a spy without paying attention because I was in the middle of something else. It's possible, but and, and if that happened, then I'm sure someone might have noticed. You can point it out in a comment, but I don't know. I don't recall doing that. So spy master mysteriously disappeared, and I now don't have as much information on those conflicts as I would normally have had I actually been spying on them this whole time, which I thought I was. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If it's not your first time or even your second, look for the join button to access unique emotes, badges, and other perks. New episodes are coming out every day at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, and comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.